What's up everybody, it's AJ with eTrail.com. Today we're gonna to be checking out this trail kitchen from War Ride. Now what this is gonna do is you can set your fridge up here and your grill down here and it all stores in the back of your Jeep. That way it has a permanent place to sit. You don't have to worry about it sliding around in the back. You wouldn't be able to put the grill on top of this. It wouldn't stay there. You'd have to set it next there and that takes up more space on the side. Now it's all collapsible and stays in there nice and neat. Let's check it out. What this is really good for is overlanding you can be straight up camping if you have you know, going on a camping trip. You're sleeping in a tent still, but you want a cooking station. This can still be your cooking station off to the side. Just be less to pack. You wouldn't have to pack a table or anything like that. And it's a really easy pull out. And then it's really easy to clean up because you just push it all right back into place. So there's not a whole lot of setup and take down. The setup we got going today is we got our propane grill out here on this section. This is where you do set the grills on here. It's got tie down points here so when you fold it all up you can use straps to strap it down so it stays in place you also have our fridge up here this is on the heavier part that's what this is meant for so this is going to be nice and sturdy i can shake it back and forth there's a little bit of movement but there's a bunch of bolts in it it's not going to fall it feels pretty sturdy it's just because we have it extended so much over here on the other side is we have our power supply and that's how we've got our fridge running that way and we can keep that in the back of the Jeep. There's plenty of room for that and other gear here on the side. I mentioned the tie down points earlier, but I just wanted to show you one of the issues we had with it. The included cam buckle strap, while long enough, you could tighten it down, but these clips come off when you go to slide it closed. So as you slide it closed, it hits on the edges here and it just doesn't work together like we think it should. But we do have e trailer cam buckle straps. You can see that they're a little bit longer for this application, but it's nice and secure, the grill's not moving anywhere, and it still slides into place. Let me show you. Another thing we like is that the cam buckles on the other straps that it comes with were exposed. We have a cover on ours. So you can see it's gonna protect any scratching here or when you go to close it. It does hit a little bit at the top, but it doesn't damage anything. You just push it in. You see how that one catches just a little bit? You just push down on it, and it goes right into place. Here's the tie down points for the fridge area. Our cam buckle straps, the e-trailer ones will work with here too. You can wrap, run them through these portions, run them along the top and get it strapped down tight. Now let's go over how it works. You have these yellow levers here on the side and you push down the flat side. So you see this one you're gonna have to push down. This one you have to push to the side. Just remember always push down on the flat side. So we'll push down and slide out the main portion first. Just like that, you'll hear it lock into place, and then we'll do the same thing for this one. Now it might stop like that, but that's just when it's transferring over from one caster to the other. So you just give it another pull, and it slides really easily. And that's the same way in reverse. You might have to hit it a little harder there just to get it into place. With it locked, I can push down on this lever and push it back in too. Let's go over the usable space on the grill tray, from front to back, 22 inches, from side to side. Looks like it's 15 and 3 eighths. And then we're gonna do height too to see how high up the grill can sit. Looks like it's four and three quarters. Before we show you how to install it, there's two different ways you can actually do it. We can get the no drill plate like we're gonna use today and that way you don't have to drill holes in the bottom of your Jeep. If you don't have that plate and you're fine with drilling the holes and making it permanent, you can do that. But if you wanna see how to do the plate, that's how we're gonna do it, follow us. Today we're gonna to be using the bolt-on kit. Now there's two different versions of these. There's one for the JK and the JL Wrangler. So make sure you check and make sure you got the right one. That way you can get this installed properly. First thing we're gonna do is remove these D-rings here up at top. So we're just gonna loosen these and then you wanna make sure you get the ones that are closest to the back seat. So, you know, in our instance, it's gonna be the ones furthest away from us. So we've got here and here. So we'll remove those and that's where we're gonna reinstall the bolts for this. Now, in addition to those other two D-rings up front, we're gonna do the second most rear one right here. We're gonna use the T27 just like we did before, to loosen this up and remove this. Now with it loose, we just remove it here from the driver's side. So what we're gonna do before we put 
our plate in place as we put these spacers over the rib nuts. And something you'll want to do because we had to go through it is go ahead and remove that back mat out of your Jeep. We put ours to the side there because that thickness of that was just enough to where this is how much bolt comes out. So there's not a lot of bolt that comes out. So with the carpet, there was even less. So like we couldn't get it to install. So you have to remove your back mat and this will stall way easier. Then we'll set our plate over that. Line it up with those spacers. Make sure you do it with all these on the left side. You want the arm here on the right side. So the bolt is going to be that bolt and the lock washer on top. So we'll just drop that through the spacer and then try and tighten it down that way. And come through with an Allen wrench and tighten it back down. With this installed nice and tight, we just come back with the caps and put those over the holes. The next thing we're going to do is install these feet at the back of it. And the way you can tell it's the back, you can see the yellow handles. That's going to slide the trays out when we get it installed. So that's just a good way to see which way it's sitting in there. Now, we've got the most rear hole here. So that's where we're going to install one of our feet. We've got a spacer. It goes over that. Slides right in there, and we have a nut that'll go on the inside. So you kind of just hold the nut there with your finger, and then you can turn the foot, and it'll screw in the place. The way we're doing it today is that there is no subwoofer in here, so we're going to install it in this hole. If you did have a subwoofer, you would put the spacer or the foot right here in this hole instead. So just take a look at the back of your Jeep, see which one you have, and then you'll know which one to use. We're also going to take the second one and install it in the rearmost hole back here just so it sits evenly in the back of our Jeep. We've lined up the holes that we could on the plate here. We got three of them. We got this lines up here, and then these two over here are lined up. So I'm gonna take the bolts and install them. Just gonna get them hand tightened first, and I'll come back down and tighten them down the rest of the way. Now we're going to add our spacer to the furthest to the rear hole here. So this is going to go underneath. So I'm going to lift up with one hand to get that side up and kind of try and line this up. Looks like it's about there. Set it down. Now I'll take the longer bolt. Looks like it's not quite lined up right. I can kind of Use this hand to do that to get this bolt through, but we'll drop this in and start tightening it down. The last step is to adjust the feet. That way it's balanced out. So you want to pull it all the way out and see how it sits. Now we saw that it was kind of leaning one way on us. The instructions aren't super clear on what you should do, but this is what we did to make it work. It had an extra foot in there. So we installed it here right next to where we just put this one in. We put this here to kind of balance it out and it looked a little wonky until we tightened this one back down and then it even back out flat. Now with it installed we went ahead and put our accessories on there. We got the grill and our fridge. So one thing I will mention after we did this and you go to slide it back in place before you fully tighten it down I would test that. Our fridge is a little bit bigger than a normal cooler so we found when we went to go slide it all back in it hit against that seat. So we actually had to take this back off and loosen the bolts and just shift the trail kitchen forward towards the back of the vehicle, one bolt hole, and then do that. We redid everything. Now we can slide back into place. It doesn't make any contact with the seats. I can show you. Everything slides back in like that. And now it's out of the way. We can close the gate. It doesn't heat the seat. So it works pretty well then. Just wanted to give you that heads up so you don't have to do the same thing we did. Well, I think that does it. Thanks for hanging out and I hope this helped.